this talk is concerned with energy-based failure prediction for notched FEM printed PLA specimens. We all know about the practical relevance of additive manufacturing and failure prediction for additively manufactured components. However, notch root based methods for failure prediction are often insufficient because the stresses in the notch root can become very large and therefore the material behavior in the notch root can be very complex, for example plastic, and more importantly unknown. There are two main solutions to this problem, both motivated by Neubauer's structural support concept, namely the theory of crit critical distance, TCD, and the average strain energy density criterion, or ASSET criterion. The TCD was already verified for FEM printed PLA specimens by Ahmed and Zussman in 2018. The goal of this study is to verify the ASSET criterion for FEM printed PLA. For this purpose, we're going to use the very same data as Ahmed and Zussman did, so they printed a number of specimens using the process parameters that you can see above. And one of the process parameters, namely the printing angle, was varied in order to uh, capture its effect on the material properties. You can see the printing angle on the figure in the right. So the figures were deposited in alternating layer orientations, orthogonal to each other. And the angle between this grid orientation and the main principal axis of the component was defined as the printing angle. Now Ahmed and Susmail printed smooth specimens in order to obtain the Young's modulus and the ultimate tensile strength. They obtained fracture toughnesses from both CT specimens and tensile specimens, and they obtained failure forces and failure stresses from notch spans specimens and from a variety of configurations. So they did some tensile and three-point bending tests. Uh, each of them for V and U notches, each of them for three different printing angles, and each of those for three different notch root radii. The data was then post-processed using the theory of critical distances, which can best be summarized in that picture on the left given by Ahmad and Susmail. So instead of using the difficult to obtain notch root stress to assess failure, the TCD suggests using the main principal stress either at a point at distance L half from the notch root, which is the point method, or the average over a line in the notch bisector line, that line method, or the average over that area shown here. All of these methods are characterized by a material parameter, which is length scale L, and we can think of this length scale as being directly related to the structural support phenomenon. There are two methods of obtaining L, namely the robust method on the left, which is calibration by experimental data, or the more easy method on the right, which is just a formula. Now, the robust method works as follows. Of the set of tested geometries, one takes the bluntest and sharpest notch and performs a fracture experiment and performs an FEM computation using the forces from the fracture experiment as boundary conditions. Then one plots the maximum principal stress or the normal stress uh, over distance in the notch bisector line. And because of consistency with the point method, those two lines must intersect at L half. And the point at which they intersect is the material strength sigma zero. Now for reasonably brittle materials, um, instead of using a blunt notch, one can imagine the infinitely blunt notch, which is a smooth specimen. and one can replace those specimens by a horizontal line at the ultimate tensile strength. And for very brittle materials, instead of using this procedure, one can also use the formula on the right, which derives length scale from the fracture toughness and the ultimate tensile strength. And you can easily see that this formula is based on linear elastic fracture mechanics. However, Ahmed and Susmil decided to use the robust method on the left for their data. Now, you can see the accuracy of the point method and the area method here. They both performed very well, most of the scatter being in the plus minus 20% scatter band, with the point method exceeding that scatter band a little bit here on the non-conservative side. So when this fraction is lower than one, um, that's a non-conservative prediction. And the area method showing some uh, conservative scatter here. The line method was not performed simply because the line method length to L would exceed the specimen dimensions. Now we want to run the same analyses on 
uh, using the strain energy density. So the strain energy density uh, is the very same thing as the Helmholtz free energy, and it's shown here. And we average that over a certain integration volume omega uh, in order to obtain a load parameter. And once that load parameter reaches a critical value, we have the failure. The critical value is a material property and it can be derived from the tensile strength and the Young's modulus uh, as a matter of consistency with an unmatched specimen. Now, the integration domain is shown on the figure here on the right, uh, which is taken from a very extensive review from Berto and Lazzarin, uh, where you can find more information on the acid cation. And it's shown for a blunt V notch, uh, but we can easily think of rho going to zero, so that would be a sharp V notch. And we can also imagine alpha going to zero, which would be a U notch or even a crack if all included. The acid criterion control volume consists of two length scales, namely small r0, which is the distance from the center of the control volume to the notch root, and it contains purely geometric information. And then there is capital R0, which is the distance from the notch root to the outer end of the control volume. And capital R0, R0 is, is material, material property. property. And, and like for the TCB, we have a formula uh, in order to obtain capital R0 from the tensile strength and the fracture toughness. And this formula is also based on the inelastic fracture mechanics. Now, for these analyses, we of course need some FEM computations. And for this purpose, we used Abacus, uh, plane strain quadratic elements with isotropic linear elasticity. And here you can see one exemplaric mesh. and uh, you can see that it's a very fine mesh for the acid criterion. So in theory, uh, we could use much coarser meshes as long as the, the elements are aligned with the integration domain. Um, after all, this is the main advantage of the acid criterion. But uh, yeah, this mesh is very fine. And you can see uh, on the lower side, you can see a plot of the strain energy density as a function of space. Please mind the logarithmic scale and you can see the integration domain over which we average the SED. Now, I said that um, for the acid criterion, we need a material length scale R0, and that we can uh, obtain R0 from the fracture toughness using a formula based on the inelastic fracture mechanics. However, Ahmed and Zusmail uh, presented two sets of fracture toughnesses, one from tensile specimens and one from CT specimens. And those differed quite a lot. But with both of these um, sets of fracture toughnesses, the acid criterion accuracy was very low. So we can see the accuracy in the very analogous plot here with a square root because the energy is quadratic in the stress. Um, and we can see that for both fracture toughnesses, uh, the, acid cr cr the, the scatter of the acid criterion is quite large. And the scatter is uh, almost only on the conservative side, so it's the error is not centered around zero. However, when Ahmed and Zusmail post-processed their data using the TCD, they didn't use the fracture toughness to obtain the length scale either. They used the more robust method, which is calibration by experimental data. So we suggest doing the very same thing for the, the acid criterion. Uh, we can do the very same thing, we can take the bluntest notch, uh, which we say, okay, that's just uh, an unnotched specimen, so therefore we have this horizontal line here. And we can take the sharpest notch, which is the one shown here. And for this sharpest notch, uh, we average the field solution over uh, control volumes with different length scales, capital R0. And from the intersection of those, for, we do that for every material. And from the intersection of those curves, we derive the length scale R0. Now, it has to be mentioned, and this is, as I said, completely analogous to what is done at TCD, but it's not normal to do this with the acid criterion. So um, it was proposed once by Razavi et al. 2018, but uh, it's definitely not the standard procedure for the acid criterion. But if we use this way to obtain the length scale R0, uh, we can find that the accuracy of the acid criterion is almost identical to that of the point method and the area method. So the scatter is almost entirely within the plus minus 20% scatter band, with no scatter exceeding that scatter band on the non-conservative side, unlike, for example, the point method, but like the area method. 
Um, however, we can see that there are some significant outliers in the conservative direction. So we have to uh, ask where they come from. And it turns out that those outli outliers are V-notch specimens where the printing angle is zero degrees. So that means the loading occurs at plus minus 45 degrees to the fiber direction. And this can be explained in terms of recent results by King, Blake, Gao 2020. Uh, and they show that for, uh, for FDM printed components uh, where the material is deposited in orthogonal layers, that when those components are loaded diagonally to the fiber orientation, then a significant amount of fiber reorientation occurs before fracture because the material is obviously weaker between fibers than within a fiber. Uh, now, of course, because this fiber reorientation phenomenon only takes place under diagonal loading and not under transversal or longitudinal loading, um, we can see the very same material acting brittle in one direction but ductile in another direction. And we can verify that this is exactly what's happening with our data uh, by looking at the fracture surfaces provided by Ahmed and Susne, which are shown here on the right. And we can also see that by looking at the stress strain curves, of course. Now, um, this fiber reorientation phenomenon is especially pronounced for V-notches because the stress concentration factor is very low. Um, the data that we analyzed, uh, or in the data that we analyzed, the V-notches had a very large opening angle. Therefore, the stress concentration is not very high, and thus the area in which the fiber reorientation phenomenon takes place was much larger. Fiber reorientation is nothing but energy dissipation. And the acid criterion being an energy-based but brittle criterion assumes that there is no energy dissipation and all energy goes into the formation of a crack and into failure. So therefore, uh, with a significant amount of fiber reorientation and energy dissipation, the acid criterion will yield conservative results. So in order to wrap up uh, the results, uh, we applied the acid criterion to experimental data provided by Ahmed and Susnil 2018 on notched FDM printed PLA specimens in order to predict failure for different notch opening angles, different notch root radii, printing angles and loading conditions. The acid criterion is conservative and shows very high scatter when R0, when the length scale R0 is obtained from the fracture toughness using formulas based on linear elastic fracture mechanics. However, when one would perform the same analyses with the theory of critical distances, one wouldn't use the fracture toughness either. Instead, one would calibrate the length scale L using experimental data. So we proposed the very same thing um, for the acid criterion. Uh, when calibrating R0 in analogy to the PCD, uh, the acid criterion yields uh, equally good results. So the accuracy of the PCD and the acid criterion is then almost identical. Almost, but not entirely. So there were some outliers on the conservative side and we could explain these outliers and because of energy considerations, we expect them always to be in the conservative side, which is good. Now, when one can ask uh, if the accuracy of the PCD and the acid criterion is the same, then why even bother? We can just stick with the PCD. And uh, then again, I have to say that the main advantage of the acid criterion is the independence of the mesh resolution or the relatively high tolerance uh, of coarse meshes. And you can find that in a number of different sources, for example, in this one uh, over here. So this is the, the main advantage of the acid criterion, the main motivation. All right, this concludes uh, our investigations and thank you very much for your attention.